So I'm going to redo this example, the same example, um, with a different approach. So we rely on essentially a geometric solution here, right? Uh, we want to find the intersection of two planes, and, and we rely on the observation that the line of intersection for the two planes has to be orthogonal to the two normal vectors for the planes, right? The direction vector for the line is orthogonal to those two vectors, which means we can find it using a cross product. Okay, um, but there's also a sort of purely algebraic way to find the line of intersection for the two planes, okay? Uh, and it's essentially solving a system of equations, which we kind of had to do anyway. Um, it's just that this will be a slightly well, I don't want to say more complicated, but there, there's one sort of subtle point that we have to deal with. So let me show you how it goes. So the other way we can do this is we, we rewrite the two equations in this so-called um, general form, right? So we, we write x minus y plus z. We move the constants over. So 2, well, it's going to be the same as the constants we had down there, minus 1. Right, and then it's going to be minus 2x plus y, and then plus z equals minus 2. Okay. All right, so that's the, the second plane. All right, um, so I'm going to use these actually as labels for the equations so we can talk about how we're going to manipulate them. And there is, you know, I could probably do the same thing I did here, just simply add them together to cancel the y's, but in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same steps that a linear algebra student would use um, if they were learning to do this using this so-called Gaussian elimination procedure that we teach in our linear algebra courses. Now, of course, they would also convert this to a matrix. We're going to skip the matrix part, um, and we're just going to sort of proceed. And the way you proceed is you, you first eliminate, you know, the variable on the far left from one of the two equations. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, we're going to take the the p2 equation, and we're going to add two times the p1 equation. And so I'm going to recopy the first equation, and then so it's going to be 2x added to minus 2x gives me zero, right? And then minus 2y added to y will give me minus y. Uh, 2z added to z will give me 3z. Minus 2 added to minus 2 gives me minus 4. Okay? And then the next thing I'm going to do, and let me just, just to save myself a bit of writing. Um, so this is kind of my, I don't know, let's call this um, p2 prime. Um, and I'm going to just now do minus 1 times p2 prime. So that's going to become a plus, a minus, and a plus. At which point, I guess maybe that's p2 double prime. Okay? So it's going to be y minus 3z plus 4. Okay? Equals plus 4. All right. Uh, one more step. I'm going to take this um, p2 double prime, and I'm going to add it to the first one, okay? Uh, and that's going to get rid of y in the second equation. So I'm going to get x. So z minus 3z gives me minus 2z equals minus 1 plus 4, 3. And then I get um, y minus 3z is equal to 4, okay? All right, now we're in business because what I can do is I can actually rewrite like this, x equals 3 plus 2z, y is equal to 4 plus 3z. Um, now that looks an awful lot like parametric equations for a line, except of course there's no z. I guess we could say z equals z. I guess, right? We're not saying much about the z. Well, Let's do one more thing. 
just to make it look like we usually do, let's replace z by t. Well, then that z is a t, and that's a t, right? And so what we get is uh, x equals 3 plus 2t, y equals 4 plus 3t, and z is equal to t. And those are definitely the parametric equations for a line. Uh, if we wanted to kind of put this into vector form, we could do that. L of t will be, what's our initial point? 3, 4, and 0. Um, and then t times 2, 3, 1. Right. And if we compare to the result that we got before, pretty much exactly the same. In fact, we even got that same initial point, um, which is not, I mean, it's not complete coincidence. It's, it's that if I put z equal to 0, which is like putting t equal to 0 here, you get 3 before 0, and that's how I solve for, for the point over there, right? Um, the only difference is we have the sign change here on the, on the direction vector for the line, but otherwise it's exactly the same. Um, so depending on you know, preferences and, and what you're comfortable with and where your skills lie, you may prefer the first approach. You may prefer the second. Um, I think I kind of prefer the second. It's shorter once you kind of know what's happening there, right? It's mainly once you get to here, how do you deal with the fact that, you know, there's no equation for Z? If you kind of, once you get the hang of how to deal with that, this is fast. I think, I think it's faster than, you know, because you, you still have to solve in a system of equations over here, right? We still have those steps going on. Plus, you have the additional work of kind of setting up and, and computing the cross product. Um, but if you're kind of in that zone, you're good at doing cross products, you're good at the vector stuff, that might work better for you. Go with whichever option works best for you.